All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to some more Lifeline. Oh, last episode was insanely intense. Taylor has left us on the edge of our seats. Last transmission we had from him was, oh God, hang on, hang on, hang on. And then he went busy. I heard the beep, which means his comms is active again and he is back. Sorry, I couldn't stop my gad reflex. Pass just tore into wild boy's guts. And yeah, I turned around and threw her up, which I think is fair. My puke had a green tint to it, too, so my mind is churning over the implications of that. Why won't they stop screaming? Throw them some more food? Or get out of there? I think we should get out of there. Believe me, I'm trying to figure out my options. There's only one corridor into and out of this control room. The proximity monitor tells me that whoever or whatever the five people, please let them just be people outside are. They're going to be here in a matter of minutes. If I hold butt, I think I could sprint out of here and make it outside before they get to the doorway. And then what? I have a matter of a few seconds to assess the situation, figure out whether they are a threat. And if they are, I pretty much have to opt for flight because fight isn't an option when it's five against one. My heart is jackhammering in the back of my throat right now. At least it's louder than the rats. So what do you think I should do? Make a break for it or stay put and see what happens, dude. We're making a break for it. I'm done. I'm done with this place. This is freaking out of my realm right now. Right. That's the plan. I'm going to crack a glow rod for the sprint down the hallway. That goes in my left hand and my right hand makes a fist. And that's as prepared as I know how to be for what happens next. Although, maybe I'm freaking myself out for nothing, you know? Wouldn't the odds overwhelmingly support the idea that the people approaching aren't hostile? That they are either a rescue team, please, 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 or fellow craft survivors who are in the same predicament I am, or in worse shape even? Maybe I can offer them food that keeps them from collapsing. Maybe they need pain meds more than I do, and I can give them a hand with that. Maybe I'm the one who helps rescue them. We keep broadcasting an SOS until somebody hears us. Yes, okay, I'm talking to myself down off a ledge. All this makes so much more sense. Oh my god, wild boy. Wild boy? You're dead rat? There is something green crawling out from his body. Oh my god. It's, oh god, it's nothing that exists on Earth. It's... It's that same, you know, glowing, luminescent green. Like its whole body is made of rats, eyes, oh god, and it's... I can't even... It's reeling sinews and veins back into its body mass, like... Like retracting them from inside Wild Boy, from inside his limbs. Like this, this thing was, I don't know, was working him like a puppet or a marionette. But from the inside... Is it an alien? Dude, you've got to get away, like now. Believe me, I backpedaled in the opposite corner while I was telling you about the situation. I mean, the scientist in me is fascinated about the idea that I'm witnessing an unknown life form here. And if my IEVA suit's camera hadn't crapped out on me day one, I'd be recording every single angle of this. But that doesn't mean that I'm ready to bail out of here so much as sneezes in the wrong direction. You have to kill it or try to capture it. Dude, what happened to escaping? Try to capture it or you have to kill it. Uh... You have to kill it. Kill it with what? It's not like I've even got a rolled up newspaper handy so I can take a few swats at it. Besides, A, this is an unknown species. I hate to think of that kill it, as now humans are going to deal with its first contact, and B, if I make an aggressive move on the wounded one, who's to say the other one won't turn on, or the other three won't turn on me? You're right. Just capture it. Capture it with what? I told you already, this isn't like the caravel. There isn't just a bunch of junk lying around. 
If I had known I was going to need a rat cage or a mason jar with holes poked in his lid, I'd have packed them and an ashtray and a paddle game and remote control and some matches and a lamp and a chair and that's all. Uh oh. Computer's flashing at me. What's it say? It's... Wow, this is kind of unbelievable. That ship that came cruising in the sector earlier, it's altered its flight path and it's decelerating. The ship's new arc will take it right to this moon. And it's not as if I can tell much of anything about telemetry from these old school blocky monitors and pixelated readouts. But if I had to guess, it's locking in to land inside this crater to come nab me from inside this mysterious peak. To get me the hell off this rock. Are they still being targeted? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess they are. I have no idea how to override whatever weapon systems is hooked up. Hopefully they are got the defenses up. Hopefully they can defend against an EMP or a particle beam or whatever it is. Hopefully they are not just... Oh no. Communication interrupted. Date time stamp invalid. Searching. Reacquiring signal. Establishing connection. Receiving message. Happening again. No, this is the last thing I need. What do I do if the ship comes to rescue me and the peak decides to freaking disappear with me inside it before they get here? Don't be inside it, dude. Please. We already established you needed a freaking run. Yeah, easy to say, but this is where the computers are. If I hadn't gone inside here, I wouldn't know about the rescue ship in the first place. Here's what I don't understand. I mean, there's a list mile long of things I don't understand, but here's one more bullet point to add. This is clearly a control room, so who's supposed to be in control of it? Who was it built for? And where are they now? Uh-oh, it's happening again. What is? It's that sound again, that screaming from the rats. Are they out of food? Yes, they finished off what I gave them to eat, down to the smallest crumb. And I can't keep tossing them a new snack every few minutes just to keep them quiet. I've just, I've got too many plates to keep spinning right now. The rats, the food supply, the ship, the computers, the uh, well, I guess I just figured out which plate to spin next. For better or worse, who am I kidding? It's never for the better. Which plate? The proximity alarm just dropped from five approaching shapes to four. Two. One. Zero. Because they are no longer in proximity. They are in presence. They've entered the peak. They are in the same long dark hallway that I walked through. The same hallway where the rats brushed my leg before I knew they were my rats. Back when all four of them were alive. Are, are any of them actually alive, carrying those green creatures around inside of them? The same hallway where I really wished I had looked for the side corridors, places to hide in the dark, to plan my escape, unnoticed. The same hallway that now stands between me and the freedom of the outdoors. How screwed up is it that I'm considering the cracked, uninhabitable surface of this moon to represent freedom? Hey, uh, I just had a weird thought. Can I run it by you? Sure, lay it on me. It's not like we've, you know, we're running out of time or anything. All right, so I've still got two glow rods left. I just peeked down the hall, and if these guys have any kind of lights, they're sure not using them. That's a five-minute trudge in near total blackness. There's just low light of the control room at the end of the gu at the end to guide them. Should I maybe crack a glow rod and toss it down the hall toward them? Oh, gosh. Um, no, absolutely not. Yeah, all right. I get where you're coming from. No point in wasting a few, my few resources before I have any idea about these people or their intentions. I had been trying to stay optimistic, thinking it might come across as a gesture of goodwill, a peace offering. I let them know I'm in here and that I'm trying to make their journey easier. If they turn out to be stragglers, survivors from another one of the downed spaceships, 
I can't even imagine how relieved they'd feel to see a gesture of friendliness at this point. Me, personally? I probably would have broken down crying in gratitude if someone had tossed me a glow stick. But holding off is probably smart. Just wait. Act casual? I was wrong. Throw one. Hmm. Yeah? Alright, cool. I'm gonna throw one. Can you see anything? Oh, say, can I see the glow rod's early light? Not really, not so much. The people, the five of them, they're still a couple of minutes away from reaching it. I may have mentioned that I was never big on sports, not much of a pitching arm, in other words. I suck at throwing glow sticks. Anyhow, not much to do now but wait for the next few minutes and... Huh. Something weirder is happening with the little E.T. that was inside a wild boy. How do you mean? I mean, I'm not really sure how to even describe the little life form to you. The fact that the damn camera on this IEVA suit isn't functioning is literally costing us history right now. This thing, this creature, it's, for the last few minutes, it's been pulling parts back into itself, which is exactly as gruesome as and unpleasant as it sounds, in case that wasn't coming across. I have been half ignoring it because it makes me ill every time I look over there. You have to describe it. It's like I said, tendrils woven all throughout Wild Boy's body, arteries and sinews and, I don't know, dendrites. A whole network, multiple networks. They had spread out from the creature and tangled themselves in a Wild Boy's system. So this thing was just enmeshed with my poor rat's nerves and musk culture and organs was in everything. A parasite, a passenger that was inside a wild boy and that I don't know, that had gotten to the point of where it was just wearing him around like a suit, dancing him like a puppet. But not in a clumsy way, not like it didn't know how rats moved or operated in a perfect way. Where only the thing was different was the eyes. The eyes had gone bioluminescent green. And then that scream. I've never heard a rat make that sound. I've never heard anything make that sound. What's it doing now? Like I was saying, it seems to have reeled all of its various tentacles and capillaries back into itself. Now it's this kind of sleek, almost featureless thing just sitting inside of a pile of hair and meat that used to be Wild Boy. What's really strange is the E.T. actually looks bigger than the rat was. Like there's no way all of it could have fit inside Wild Boy's skin. It isn't physically possible. Dude, just please stay clear of it. Yeah, I'm keeping back from it, but that doesn't mean I'm not curious about it. As far as I know, I'm the first human who's ever seen this life form. Or scarier thought, I'm the first one who's still alive to tell it, tell about it so far. So in the absence of any real way to record this experience, I'm trying to take in as much as I possibly can. What are the other rats doing? They're just acting like normal rats. Hungry, but normal. That's what I was saying. They move and scramble around like always. There's nothing about their gait or their sniffing behavior. Yes, yeah, sniffing behavior is the thing that study in lab rats, and yes, I know it sounds weird, but whatever. Or anything else that would make an observer think that these rats weren't fully in control of their own bodies. But seeing the level of integration in the parasite had in the wild boy's muscles and nerves, I'm certain that the ET was piloting my rat around. Okay, so I know this is going to sound psycho. But I think the most accurate word for them is undead. Maybe that's the logic leap. Maybe I'm shouting zombie when there's something altogether dif different. I mean, I think that whatever's inside them, it's keeping them functioning, keeping biological process going. But are these the same rats with the same personalities that I was testing before the Varia crashed? Before their eyes turn green? I really don't think so at all. The thing is, 
Oh. Oh no. What is it? The visitors are here. What? What do I do? Are they threatening you? No. Nobody's threatening me. Nobody said a word or made a sudden move or done anything. They're just standing there and I'm shaking so bad I feel like I might collapse. Please tell me what's going on. I... I don't know. There are tears running down my face and I haven't even figured out why. It's like my eyes decided to do whatever they wanted, throw a party before my brain has gotten anyone's RSVPs. Tell me what you see. Okay. They're just... There aren't any words that are going to accurately capture everything I'm going through. So I'm just going to tell you the facts and I'll try not to hyperventilate or scream or anything midway through. The first thing I saw when they walked in was the American flag patch on the spacesuits. On the left shoulder, just like the one in my own suit, stars and stripes forever. The suits are kind of beaten up, kind of dusty, like they've been through all hell and back. Or maybe not quite and back yet. They're all wearing the dome helmets with the basically opaque gold layer on the visor. I know, I know. It's there to help filter out the UV rays. But again, nothing screams America more than viewing the whole world through a thin layer of gold, huh? Feeling pretty homesick? Or this is so exciting? Yeah, I'm sure thought so too. Super exciting. I mean, seeing these space suits, space suits, they were just so comforting. They were just so familiar. They were just so dang familiar. I'm looking at five patches sewn onto the five American uniforms. Five words in clear, legible, sans serif font. Antoine, Trotter, Adair, and Colby. Wait, what? Wasn't that our pilots? Captain Aya. Dude. Get out now. And how exactly would you propose that I get out? There's exactly one exit and exactly five people or whatever they become when they stop being people between me and that exit. Oh my God. Mathematically speaking, I'd say my odds are precisely screwed. In metric terms, that's up Poop Creek Sands Paddle. And now, oh no, 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 please stop. What's happening? Something that I was praying wouldn't happen. Although I have no idea how I thought it was going to avoid it. Colby. Or the one with Colby's name tag. Lifting off her helmet. Oh no. It's her. It really is her. I was hoping, hoping that somehow these were just survivors from another shipwreck. Just normal people who had chanced across the variant who had taken the IVA suits to protect them against the elements. But no, it's really Colby. It's really all of them, helmets off, exactly the way I last saw them, except with blank, green, glowing eyes. You have to get away, dude. I know, I want to, I want to run. But my legs feel so weak. I've been walking all over this moon for three days. I'm barely enough food to survive. So much of me just wants to stop running and just stay here with my friends. Those are, those are not still your friends. Stop looking at their eyes. Alright, those are not still your friends, dude. I know, I know they're not, but they look like my friends. Their eyes are wrong, I know, but the longer I look at them, the more sense they make, too. And there are little marks around their mouths, dark green scabs from it looks like claw marks of some sort. Like something was struggling to climb inside their mouths. You don't understand. You're not really hearing me. This is the first time since the crash, and I'm not panicked about anything and everything. Whatever happens next, it's what's supposed to happen. All of this, the very crashing, me finding the peak, all of it was meant to take place to bring me to this moment. To this calm. Screw calm. Freaking get the heck out of there, dude. No, before I might have to run from this. But now... I know that I need to be a part of this union. What? I need this passenger, just as it needs me to play host. 
This is serenity like I've never experienced before. Colby's picking up the little green creature that was waiting over inside Wild Boy's remains. Now I understand. It was waiting for me. I was waiting for it. It gets in through the mouth. That's what the claw marks are. I just have to relax. Smile. Oh, dude, freaking fight it. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I can't. Oh god, what am I doing? If it gets in through the mouth, I just realized that the green spit, the horrible taste in the mornings. Oh god, one of these things was trying to climb inside me while I was sleeping. I have to get out of here. That's what I've been saying. Can you find an exit? The only exit is going to be knocking down five people who used to be my shipmates and hoping I can scramble out of the confusion. I think I can duck past Trotter. He's always the slowest of the bunch. Woof. Did you make it? No, I didn't make it. Woof is not the noise of someone who made it. They were, they were all just standing there aloof until I tried to go around them and suddenly they become really strong and really focused on stopping me. It's like they're targeting my injuries like they know somehow. I can't, I can't fight off all of them. Any one of them is stronger than I am. If you can't fight, flee. Flee where? There's nowhere to run. They've got me cornered in this control room. I can't outmaneuver them. I can't win. Oh my god, this is it, isn't it? I'm gonna die right here in this room at the hands of the Varia crew. They're going to infect me with whatever the hell their little parasite creature is. And I'm gonna die. Why won't they all stop screaming? There must be a solution. What possible solution could I have? If I try to make a break for the exit, they block me, and they are strong as hell. If I back off, they are going into this weird standby mode, just waiting for me to try another dash. All I can do from this room is fiddle with these computers that I don't really know how to fiddle with. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be more proactive about taking out my jailers, but it's not if I have any weapons. Really wish I'd packed one, or hell, built one from the spare parts back at the caravel. But I didn't honestly think I was going to be packing heat for a shootout on the high moon. Must be something to commute, compute. I'm at a loss with these systems. I might as well start bashing my fists or hell my forehead against the keys at random for all the good it'll do. Wait, that's it. What's it? Random bashing? No, not random bashing. Well, not totally random. Just hear me out. This peak, this control room, it's a command center for a weapon, yes? That's what the time to pulse is all about. I don't know what the weapon is exactly. I'm guessing an electromagnetic pulse, a particle beam, something big. But odds are pretty good that if it's powerful enough to, to rip starships out of the sky, then all I have to do is figure out how to reprogram it to unleash on these coordinates. And it'll be powerful enough to fry every inch of this peak into a crisp. Including the screaming green aliens that are running around inside the crew of the Varia. Wait, hold on a minute. That means he's going to kill himself. No, there's no time to hold on. Time is at a pre time is at a premium around here. It's moving in ways I don't totally understand. You and I might get cut off for a second. It turns out to be half an hour. Turns out to be half an hour from where I'm observing. Who knows what these various zombies can do in that time. Nope. I've got to act fast. Are you with me? Do I have a choice? I mean, sure, you have a choice. And if you really wanted to, I'd give you a form to try and talk about me out of, talk me out of this. But this is what it's all been leading toward, isn't it? Something incredibly stupid and slightly heroic, or maybe the other way around, that just might save the day. Alright then. Here's the thing. I've got five undead co-workers, three undead rats, a little green extraterrestrial, and I don't know what the hell it is, all staring me down with these cold, unnatural emerald eyes. There's nothing behind those eyes. And they all seem to really want my eyes to look and look like that too. So I've got literally nothing else in the whole universe left to lose. If I fail, I'm no worse off than I would be anyway. And if I succeed, they'll have to stop this damn screaming. Wish me luck. 
Obviously. I wish you luck. Thanks. You know, I really don't like the fact that this whole Varia crew all just turned and looked at me at the same time. Scary monsters are super creeps. Never mind that it's... Communication interrupted. Date time stamp invalid. Searching. Requiring signal. Establishing connection. Receiving message. Awful lot has gone since I disappeared. Not exactly the best time for it to happen. What just went on? I had enough time for me to get the pulse weapon targeted to the precise location of the peak. Confirmed it against the topographical map, latitude, longitude, we're good to go. But the crew from the very, they seemed to understand the plan and they did not like it. I don't know how they know. They don't seem to be sense it. They are not speaking, they are just freaking screaming. And they are all coming at me. I'm trapped. If I back away from the computer, I'm afraid they'll shut down the sequence. But if I stay here, I'm afraid they'll rip me apart or shove that green thing down my throat. <laughs> guard the computer or guard your throat. Guard your throat. I'm trying, believe me. I don't I don't want that thing inside me. Whatever is piloting my old friends, it's making them stronger than they ever used to be. They are not bulkier, but it's like all their muscles are working way too efficiently. I can't grapple. I'm just kicking out, lashing out, trying to keep them at bay. Wait, there's a siren going off. Good siren or bad siren? It's louder than the alien screaming, so I'm going to go ahead and say good siren. It's... Oh my god, finally. It's the rescue ship. They are landing. My screens are all lit up with what can be the greatest news of all time and space. I'm finally going to get out of here. Uh, except... Except what? Except that they are all walking into a situation that they cannot possibly prepare to encounter. They are all nine be There are nine alien beings in this room. Oh my god. This room being a control center that seems to exist for their express purpose of pulling ships out of space and using the bodies of those ships crews as hosts for a parasitic life form. I have no idea whether my rescuers are armed or can fight these creatures. Hell, I have no idea whether these creatures are even vulnerable to standard issue stun batons, which is probably about as heavy as any armament is going to get. And the alien beings have taken notice to my rescue ship too. Good news. They are leaving me alone here at the computer. Bad news, they are staring, starting to head down the corridor. Oh hell. They are going to intercept my rescuers before my rescuers can rescue me. You gotta get there first. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try. It's a question of will I be able to push past them in the corridor? If we're all going the same direction, will they try to impede me? Try it and see. Hey, so they aren't being pleasant about it, but they are not physically holding me back. It's like trying to get a good look at a Mona Lisa around the tourists. Alright, mad dash down the hall. I'll talk to you in a minute. And that's where we're going to wrap this one up here, guys. That was a very long episode, almost a half an hour. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is really intense. Best of luck to Taylor. And we'll see you when he returns.